Yep. Hi, good morning. This is Kelly Hobart from Apaca Direct. Sorry about the technical difficulties. We were trying to get our sound system to work, and I think it might be working now. So for those of you who are listening, if you can give us a thumbs up, if you can hear um, what I'm saying today. And today I wanted to talk about corrugated ribbing. And this is what the corrugated ribbing looks like. And I wanted to talk about this lovely little cast on on the bottom that you can use to cast on for your corrugated ribbing that is very simple. And so I wanted to take a look at that. And then maybe some characteristics that of this corrugated ribbing that you might find interesting and or useful when you're going to go ahead and do it for your project. So what I was thinking about doing it is doing it on the edge of this lovely cowl pattern and it's a praying mantis cowl pattern. And I'm not even going to try and say, see the, tell you the lady's name. It is right here on the bottom. That's her name. And it was a pattern that I found on Ravelry. And it is, I, I just love it. And it'll be great. This pattern is going to be great for ladder back jacquard. Um, we're, and I'll be talking about that in a uh, upcoming episode. But I want to just put this on the edge of the cowl on either side of it. So I was just looking at the characteristics. I had never done this corrugated ribbing before. I've seen it a ton. I just haven't used it in any of my projects. And so far, let me show you just a little thing about it. Do you see how it's not super stretchy? Um, that it looks like ribbing, but it almost reminds me of color work. Because if you look at these socks here, and this is just one by one ribbing, you could see how stretchy these this ribbing is, right? Um, so the corrugated ribbing doesn't have as much stretch. So the first thing I would say, if I was gonna do the corrugated ribbing, I would definitely choose a larger needle when I go to cast on. Hang on a second, sorry. Some people are all coming in. So. Good morning. It's so nice to have you here with us. Sorry about the technical difficulties. Oh, and while I'm at it, and I might as well mention that every week we give a prize. And for this last week, the winning color was some, for some lovely Comfort Decrit K. And this is a great yarn if you're allergic to wool. Holiday and colors. it is a nice holiday color set that I thought would be great to send out in the mail. And let me read. I'm looking for... Where is it? Ah, it's 50% super fine nylon and 50% super fine acrylic on this DK. But if you feel it, you see how it's not shiny? The colors are not shiny at all. And it knits up beautiful with a little bit of halo um, in the yarn. And so that's kind of popular having the halo. So you get that in this comfort DK and you don't have to do anything extra. <laughs> So, you have people, so say, say hi to Canada. Good morning to all of you from Canada. Thank you for joining me today and New York. That's fantastic. I bet the weather is changing in New York, huh? It probably is cold there right now. <laughs> we need to get out our knitting and our slippers and all of those lovely things because the weather is changing. So for this week, I was thinking that we could offer a prize of these two colorways and um, the purple or the red. And this is Bravo Petites. And what this is is 100% baby alpaca made in Peru. And it is a lovely yarn. It feels so soft. And if you want to be warm, <laughs> alpaca is wonderful because it's a hollow core fiber. And it insulates. The air gets trapped in the, the fibers themselves in the core and just heats you right up. <laughs> so what colors are they voting for? Um, purple or red. Purple or red. I'm holding on to yeah. Can you see it there? Purple or red? Yep. And it's a great yarn. I've used, I've probably made, I don't know, five million projects with baby alpaca yarn. It's one of my favorite yarns ever, ever. So let's take a look at this ladder back jacquard. So for those of you who have never seen this before, again, I'll show it to you. That's what it looks like. It's like um, two color ribbing, but they call it a ladder, oh, excuse me, not ladder back. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's um, corrugated ribbing. <laughs> I'll be doing the uh, ladder back jacquard in a future episode. Yes. So let's take a look at this. It is so um, cool. It kind hey. of reminds me, yes, Jim? Hang on one second. They wanted to know about the discount code. The code for the oh, yes. Yeah. Every week we offer a discount code for 
our um, whatever yarn we're fe featuring for the prize for the week. And this week is Bra it's Bravo, um, the Petites, uh, Baby Alpaca Petite. And the discount code for that is TT122. And it's for today only for 10% off. Meg so and uh, Meg will, um, if she hasn't posted that, I'm sure she will very soon. So that's fantastic. Now let's take a look at our corrugated ribbing. And this corrugated uh, ribbing can be used anytime you're doing ribbing at all, provided that you remember that it's not going to be this stretchy. It's gonna be more like this, because it's more like two co color work. So you see how this doesn't have a lot of stretch? This has a little bit of stretch, but not a lot of stretch. So something to keep in mind. But it adds, I think it adds a little bit, don't you think it adds a little bit of flair to your project? Kind of cool, huh? And this is two by two here, and then one by one here. And I just knit this sample up this morning just so I could show you, um, and kind of, because I had never done it before. It's like, how the heck do you do this? But it's totally cool. So um, we can use this for edges on our scarves. We can use it for edges on our cowls, edges on socks, cuffs anything like that. Uh, mittens, you can use this on all kinds of things. So it's kind of cool. How come it's so different? <clears throat> like they, you don't ever see it much. You do see it a lot. If you look in, um, it on uh, different forms and things like that, it is actually a present. So I'm going to just knit this first stitch. And then you can see that I'm on the right side of my work. So in order to purl, see, I've knit that first stitch. And then I would, you got to get this blue yarn just move it out of the way. And then this, oops, you have to bring the gray yarn forward. And then you would just purl. And once I get away from the edge, I kind of do a better job of controlling what I'm doing. But on that edges, it's a little bit hard. Oops, see how that blue yarn needed to go to the back. And then, then everything, once everything is in the back, then you can knit that next stitch. And like I said, if I was doing this for my project, I will definitely be using two needle sizes larger just to make sure that the it doesn't get too tight or sucked in, especially for this edging, since the edging is not really um, super uh, flexible. So there's I say. a question that came in. Can sure. this be used for one color? So we could do question. Well, if you were if you were um, doing this. Um, uh, Jim said, can you use it with one color? It's, it, if you do this with one color, it's just ribbing, right. knit one pearl, one ribbing. Okay. Yeah. And so um, that is, you know, so you see how I move both the yarns to the back. Let me move this little hair out of here. And then I would insert my needle and then I'm knitting, throwing with my right hand and doing um, the continental style of knitting with my left hand. But you can just uh, drop one yarn and pick up the other. So this goes to the front. This goes to the front. And see, I have my blue yarn out of the way. So now I'm going to purl. It almost, what it reminds me is very similar to double knitting. That's what it kind of reminds me of. So both yarns to the back. One I'm working in the back. And then both yarns to the front. And then purl. And then both yarns to the back. Knit. And then both yarns to the front. Pearl. And then both yarns to the back. Knit. And both yarns to the front. Pearl. So I want to, when you're doing, um, Suzanne Bryant said, always make sure you have, if you have your black yarn in your left hand, put keep the black yarn in your left hand, whether you're, whatever you're doing. Um, don't switch them back and forth. And I think that has to do with the yarn dominance. I'm, I'm guessing that that does. I haven't done this corrugated ribbing enough to be super familiar with it. And so um, uh, I, I don't know exactly, but um, yeah. I'm still learning just everything to the front and then purl and then everything to the back and knit. And then everything to the front and purl this is the um, two by two ribbing now. So we do that for two stitches and then everything to the back. Knit. Okay. 
and you just leave that black strand there and then everything to the front pearl and then everything to the back net and I'll show you in just a second um, the uh, what what is going on on this next row here so you can see what the wrong sided row looks like oops see on here you see how I, I didn't move my um, blue to the back before I purled which is fine all you do is you try to get go back just slip those stitches back and then put this in the back and then that's how you fix it if you run into that problem and have that problem okay so then we have this in the back and we're going to knit and then we're going to knit Okay. And then, oops, do you see those two strands right there where I messed that up? If you do that on yours, it's just from um, having the strand of yarn in the, in the wrong place. Because this is the right side of our work and we don't want it to show, just go back right there to those two stitches, drop them off your needle, grab this strand and put it over the top and then put those back on the needle with the right hand leg in front. So they're, your stitches are mounted correctly. And then you see the right hand legs in front, that's mounted correctly. And then let's go back one more time. Here's this one, the strand of yarn has gone across the front of my work, not good. We don't want that. So what I'll do this time, let's see if I can just lift it up. There you go. And then just flip this right on over the back like that. Now it's in the correct position. Now let's take a look at the other side and see what we can do there. I want to do just a couple stitches and then I'll show you this fancy dancy cast on. And the cast on is just doing a long tail cast on with one little trick. See how this strand is just caught there? Just bring that right up over the top. All the pieces. There you go. And then put that back on your needles and that one strand was you know a little funny turn our work okay now we said our right strand is going to be in our left hand and it will eventually I'm going to do the first couple stitches so I'm going to go ahead and purl two because those are I'm purling it as I see it and then I'll have to bring my black yarn to the back so that I can knit okay and then bring both yarns to the front so we can purl try not to capture that black yarn in there I don't want to capture that I just want it to stay there and stay on its own and then bring it to the back again and I have my black yarn so I can knit it. Oh, that's what's causing the strands. Oops, let me show you something. Don't do that, don't bring that. Now I see why I'm doing the, let's see. One second, I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna do this one little part differently because I was bringing the blue strand and just carrying it across the front again like I did before. And that's not cool because we don't want, we want all of our strands to stay on the back of our work. So we need to keep that in mind when we're working. So on this blue one, I'll just go back. So when we start the beginning of this row, we'll take our blue strand and put it to the front. Okay, then we'll go ahead and knit. Okay. And then we bring this black strand and put it back here because we do not want it to get in the way of the of being on the front of the work. And we purl those. There you go. And then this one needs to stay back here because we're going to bring the black one forward and we're going to knit it. And then we're going to move the black one out of the way and bring the blue one forward and purl those and then move the blue one 
and bring the black one forward and knit those. See, so it's very similar to double knitting, I think. And there you go. This one is a um, knit the one by one ribbing. So let's see if I can put this black one in my left hand this time and put the blue one in my right hand. All right, so we have the black and then blue and then black and then blue. That's why when you start the, you find a new skill that you, or something that you wanna try on a project, it's good to take out scrap yarn and just practice for a little while until you get proficient at what you're doing. And um, it'll make your finished project look so much better when you go and actually start the corrugated ribbing, especially with the project that I wanna do with that one, because the praying mantis, that, that is a kind of a, advanced chart to do it. It'll take me a while to do. And so I want it to look the best that it can look, right? Don't you think, Jim? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yep, I have two more here. Oop. Without, sorry, I got that strand of yarn is misbehaving. And then, uh, sorry, Jim. And that goes there. Now let's take a look at the front. And that's what it looks like. Isn't that cool? So let me just show you the cast on real quick because that was, I was most excited about the cast on because this corrugated ribbing um, reminds me very much of um, double knitting um, without actually double knitting. Um, but this corrugated ribbing. All right, so right now what we're talking about is we're talking about how to cast on for this corrugated ribbon ribbing and have it kind of look like a Latvian braid. So the first step that you do is you put a slip knot on each of your yarns that you're going to be using. And then it's very much like a long tail cast on. It takes, it is a long tail cast on. It takes the tail and the working yarn to create the stitches. So make sure your tail is long enough to be able to create all, create all the stitches. And then when you're working, um, the, yes. right. so, um, to, um, to do the cast on, um, you take it and you set it up just like a teepee. So you that you're doing the Latvian braid and you go up your thumb over your index finger and then through the hole like that. And then you grab the next color of yarn and you bring it right through the center and you cast on that next stitch. And it's just like a Latvian braid cast, cast on, it is creates a tangled mess. But don't worry, you can untangle it when you're done, okay? And make sure when you're casting on, use a larger needle for this particular, for the cast on, because you're, it's gonna want to suck in and it doesn't have a lot of elasticity to this cast on. So you can see, I'm just taking, a, each new color as I need to make the next stitch and just doing a long tail cast on stitch and bringing the next color right through the center of that V, right? Just like that. And there we go. And you see what it looks like right here? Oh, this one it looks like it was too blue. <laughs> I wonder why it probably got I'm not sure why. Let me look and see why that two, there's two blues right in a row. Let's take a look at it. So that is one blue. See if we can do it and make it so there's a, oh, let me see what this blue is. Let me recast that blue on just to make sure it's just right. So it went straight through the center because you want one stitch in one color and one stitch in the other color. Unless, of course, you're doing two by two ribbing, in which case you would want two stitches in a um, color and then the next two stitches in the next color. And you want to snug it up, but I'm trying not to snug it up so tight that my cast on edge is like sucked in. But like I said, if you use a needle that's two sizes larger, you shouldn't have a problem with that at all. 
And you can see, Jim, can you show them how the yarns are getting tangled on the bottom here? Yeah. And then you just take that new one, bring it through. Now let's take a look on the bottom here. There you go. See how I have one in the gray, one in blue, one in gray, blue, gray, blue, gray, blue. So that is how you do the cast on for your corrugated ribbing. And you can do it in either two by two or in one by one. Either one works great. <laughs> but I am going to use it on the edge of my lovely praying mantis cowl. And there it is right there. So I will let you know how that works. Well, I'm going to be working on this project for a little while. And let's take a look. First, we want to look again at the yarns that are going to be for the lucky winner for this week. And um, uh, for you can vote. So we send it out next week, shall I say. So it's two of the Bravo Petites, either in purple or red. And you guys choose. And it's 100% baby alpaca made in Peru. Yes, Jim? There it is. And then the winning colorways for today were the this color selection, and it's Comfort DK, which is great all-purpose yarn for someone who's allergic to wool, especially. Fantastic. And let's look and see who the winner was. The winner for today is Linda Kalarik. Yay! Congratulations, Linda. You won today's yarn, which is this Barocco Comfort DK. And all you have to do is get in contact with us at customer service at Alpaca Direct. And we need your shipping address so we can get it out in the mail to you. So I hope you all have a great week. This next week, I am going to talk about easy ways to catch long floats. So if you're having a hard time interlocking your floats and you just need a super easy way to do it, I have the solution for you. <laughs> so you enjoy your week and I will see you next Tuesday.